Good morning, children of God. Good morning. Is that any better? 
All right. It's funny when you turn things on and off, that actually happens. Um, good to see you here today. I'm glad that you've joined us. Uh, a lot going on in our world today, a lot of things bombarding us on a, on a daily basis, and yet it's important for us to gather together and to remember what our foundation in life is, and that is in the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and a future that is in God's hands. I hope you've been uh, watching some of the announcements that have been placed on there. Uh, a lot of things continuing to go on, and uh, any times that you'd like to be involved in any of those, please uh, ask, and we'll be glad to get you the information to do that. I do want to thank those of you who brought um, canned goods for our local pantries and, uh, and who also contributed over $250 for that. Uh, that will go a long way in helping uh, our neighbors be fed and have some uh, food stability as well. Let's just take a moment or two to quiet our hearts as we prepare to worship our Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us <laughs> confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and for the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, we may sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. And where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the Psalm responsibly this morning. The lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in an abundance of peace. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. The lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers the one who succeeds in evil schemes. The lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land.
but the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The second reading is from the first book of Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the good news according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Lord, Surrounded by his disciples, Jesus said, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And if anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, 
do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you will give will be the measure you get back. The gospel, the good news of our Lord. Grace to you may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, the risen one from God. I hope you found a little card in each of your bulletins. It is the things that we've been talking about over the last five weeks that come from our baptismal uh, covenant that we have made with God and, and by our confirmation promises that we make at that moment. I hope that you'll keep that and tuck it in somewhere in your Bible or on a mirror in the morning so that you can look at it and see our mission as the people of God. During the Epiphany season, we have looked at how baptism shapes us by giving us a new identity and by placing us not alone in the world, but within a community, a family of faith where we can learn and we can grow. That family of faith is not founded upon our heredity or our ethnicity or about our common interests and worship style but it's shaped and held together by the word of God and by the sacraments in which we experience God's grace and forgiveness. And because of that, we have a different understanding because of God's love of what life is all about within this world. It is that good news that we seek to share here among God's people and out in the midst of the world in the midst of a world that is struggling mightily these days. And we do so, not just with our words, but with our actions. We just choose to live differently. How do we share that good news? By following the example of Jesus, to not seek to be served in our daily lives, but to serve others. That becomes clear in the last two points on that card of the five. Last week, we talked about the radical nature of Jesus, love being so much more than just showing a little kindness than necessary, about loving in a radical way. That's what we just read about in the gospel lesson for today. As Jesus talks to a new group of recruits, he says, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold the matching shirt, but give it to them as well. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. And that's what we're called to take seriously. If you were to tell me that that's totally out of touch with the reality of this world, then I'd agree with you. It is. And I think Jesus would assert the same thing. And yet that's the point, isn't it? That we are called not to live by the realities and the values of this world, but by a new world that is coming one day and is the breaking into the world as we speak. We can be merciful because God is merciful to us. We can forgive because we know the power of forgiveness in our own lives through Jesus Christ and the new start that that brings. We can give of ourselves and of our possessions because we realize that all that we have even life itself, we have received as a gift 
from our Lord. That is a whole new way of life that starts with Jesus Christ. But the last of those five, push it a little bit further. And I think sometimes we have trouble with that. You see, we can also be proactive in helping our society become more life-giving and more affirming to all of humanity and to all of God's creation. Now, I acknowledge that you can't find a lot of that within the New Testament. All of those original disciples were so focused on communicating God's grace and God's love and God's healing power to individuals who are in need, to forming that community of faith that comes through the Holy Spirit. And you don't hear much pushback against the evils of society. Yet I think that is one of the reasons that is, is because those early Christians were sure that Jesus was going to return and return soon. And so it's all about reaching out to your neighbors, not trying to reform the world around us. There was no need for that because Jesus Christ would return and do that himself. Yet here we are 2000 years later. And the church has developed this understanding that we are not only called to help individuals within our society to come to know God's grace and God's love and to experience life fully, but we are called to stand against governments that are self-serving and power hungry, to stand up against misguided laws and institutional inequities that are far from God's will, that harm people created in the image of our Lord. The same motivation is there to help people experience the fullness and grace of God. Sometimes you got to get the world out of the way if they're going to do that. And that's a scary thought. I'd like to share with you a parable that, that I picked up along the way that I think shows this need in a very vivid way. Once upon a time, there was a small town on the edge of a river. The people there were good, decent people, and life was good. But one day, a townsperson walking along the river noticed a small child floating down, barely keeping its head up out of the water. This person quickly swam out and saved the child from drowning. And the next day, the same person noticed that there were two people now coming down the river, struggling to stay afloat. She called for help and both were saved from the fast moving current. But she noticed that each day, there seemed to be more and more people in that river struggling to survive. The good townspeople organized themselves quickly and set up watchtowers and training teams of swimmers who could resist the strong currents and rescue the children. They even developed into a 24 seven endeavor and most of the children were rescued. If, even with all of their efforts, not all could be saved. And all came out of the water traumatized. The town folk were working very hard, even as more children seemed to need rescuing each and every day. They were doing the best that they could. And the town clergy blessed them for their good work. And life continued in this small town on the edge of the river in that daily routine. One day the people noticed that the young woman was walking quickly upstream along the river. They shouted, where are you going? We need your help to rescue all these children. 
And she responded, I think it's about time someone goes upstream to see how all these children are ending up in the river. I wish it was that simple, but I think the call is the same. And it comes from our Lord to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. To dare to walk up the river and to see what's going on that so many people right now are at risk. Is there something about our society? Is there something about what we do and say in our government or how we handle problems that, that is exasperating the situation? I know there's a lot of hesitation to do this because it sounds like getting involved in politics and knowing that once that conversation starts, we won't agree on how to handle the things we discover. And I understand that. And I think that's true. But welcome to reality. Yet welcome as the people of God who are called for more. I believe we are called not just to lament the suffering that is in the world and to pick up the pieces of broken lives. But I think part of that call as Christians is to hold up a better, more humane and level path for our society and work for that in our government. We will at times disagree as children of God of what that means how to handle poverty, equal rights, health care, immigration, yes, abortion. But should that stop us from having the conversation and seeking what is best for God's world? Maybe the most important thing we can do right now is that we can start that conversation and start not worlds apart already, but begin to start at the place that we are called to be as Christians, to seeking the best for all people, not how to gain power or to win or to get our way. If we start there, we can go different paths but we've agreed on what the goal is. And that is important. See, in that conversation, we're not Republicans or Democrats. We're not conservatives or liberals. We're Christians and we're citizens. We should be able to begin that conversation at that same starting point. Commitment to building a community that values all people and gives everyone a shot to live up to their potential as God's creation. Will that create a perfect world? Not even close. God will do that one day. And I don't know about you, but I hope that day is soon. But maybe as we work hard to help people out of the river, we can also find ways to go upstream and discover what is causing them to be in the river in the first place. Dare to look at alternatives as people who are called to love and share everyone. Politics, no. I learned a long time ago that there's a difference between lobbying and advocating. Lobbying is what big pharma does and big banks and oil and all of the self-interest groups. They push to what is helpful for them. <clears throat> we are called to be different to push and hold up what is best for all as children of God and not speak for our interests, 
with the interests of our Lord. That is a top line to walk. I understand that. And it will cause some difficulties probably along the way. But as the people of God in this place, do we have a choice? But to work for what is best for this world, wherever that might lead us. God help us in pulling people out of the river. God give us the courage to seek why they are there and work for change, wherever that may go. Amen. Together with our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world and around our community, we confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. <clears throat> Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. Today, we especially pray for Carol, Coy, Ruth, Jack, Merle, Mike, Matt, Lois, Jason, Dale, Tom, Ron, Corey, Joellen, Aggie, Andy, and Linda. We also ask this morning that you give comfort and peace to the family and friends of Betty, Bill, Irene, and Frank upon their recent deaths. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have, inherited, who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, especially Betty, Bill, Irene, and Frank. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. And gracious Lord, we thank you for this new identity that you have given to us in baptism, the child of God. Help us to understand what that means and develop this community in a way that, that uses our gifts and our talents and shares your mercy and your forgiveness and your love. We pray that you bless these canned foods and the money that was donated so that people within our community can be fed and find the support that they need. And we pray that you'd be with us as we live within this world, knowing when you call us to action and be open to your spirit to where it may guide. Lord, in your mercy. Since we have such hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and in faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We share that peace with one another. God's peace. You may be seated.
Please rise as you are able and let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. Please have the communion elements by your side as we begin our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him, your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promises to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ has come again. It is with this bread and this cup that we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Amen. All praise and glory are yours. Holy one of Israel. Word of God incarnate. Power of the most high. One God. Now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen.
with Christ into a weary world, striving for justice and peace in all the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.